Welcome to Science on Two Wheels. Today, we're going to be talking about the difference between thermal energy and temperature. So let's get started. Alright, so the reason I'm addressing this topic today, thermal energy versus temperature, is that I've discovered quite often this is an area of pretty big misconceptions, okay? And not only between students, but, or within students, but with adults as well, even people with advanced degrees. So, first of all, in order to understand thermal energy and temperature in the first place, you've got to understand that all objects are made of particles, right? All objects and substances that you can think of. Now, the particles in those objects and substances, every single one that you can think of, they are constantly moving, okay? So, everything that you can think of, the most solid thing that you can think of, the particles that make it up, they are vibrating or moving. Generally, with solids, versus gases, for example. The particles in a gas are moving faster than the particles in a solid, or at least they're moving a farther distance. Now, we know that the energy of motion is called kinetic energy, right? So anything that is moving has kinetic energy, and the faster it's moving, or the farther it's moving, the more kinetic energy it has. All right, let's start talking about some examples. Imagine a rock, you know, something solid, like a rock just sitting on the ground doing nothing. Thermal energy is a measurement of the kinetic energy of the particles in that rock, okay? And in fact, thermal energy, if you're trying to find the thermal energy of an object or substance, then it would be the total kinetic energy of all the particles in an object. So with our rock, let's just say uh, we wanted to find the thermal energy, you know, of that rock. You would literally measure the kinetic energy of the particles within it and add it up and that would give you the thermal energy. Okay, so let's look at an example, a very simple example of that. Let's say we have an object with 10 particles. In fact, here it is. Look at that. Okay, let's give those particles kinetic energy. Boom. All right, so all the particles with a two next to them, they have two kinetic energy. All the particles with a one next to them have one kinetic energy. Now, obviously in real life, we would be using units of measurement, right? That's what you do when you measure things. Well, we're not gonna worry about that very much for this example, because we're gonna try to keep things as simple as possible. Look at that cool MR2 in the Lancer. Now, in order to find the thermal energy of our 10 molecule or 10 particle rock, we would simply add up the kinetic energy of each one of those particles. So that would give us, in this case, a thermal energy of 17. Now again, we're not using units of measurement just to keep things simple for this. So hopefully that gives you a somewhat clear picture of what thermal energy is. Let's move on to temperature. Now temperature actually has everything to do with the kinetic energy, wow, of particles just like thermal energy, okay? Except temperature is the average kinetic energy of all the particles in an object. So instead of stopping with our total here in this example, which is 17, we'll take it one step further to find the average, which will give us our temperature. To find the average of something, you simply take the total and divide it by however many items you have. In this case, we have 10 items, particles. So 17 divided by 10 is 1.7, and that is our temperature. As you can see, the temperature here is much, much lower than the thermal energy. And that's because, of course, temperature is an average instead of a total. 
So what's really, really cool to me at least about temperature and thermal energy is that you can have an object with a very high temperature, but it has a much lower thermal energy than another object. And so to demonstrate this, I'm going to talk about two very different objects. Now this happens all the time in real life, but to make it obvious, we're gonna use two very different objects. Object one is a glacier, right? So glaciers are very cold and very, very large. They have trillions upon trillions of particles, right? For simplicity's sake, let's just say the glacier is 32 degrees Fahrenheit, zero degrees Celsius. Object two is gonna be a campfire. Now, wood burns at this temperature, okay, which is significantly higher than the freezing temperature of our glacier, right? So each particle in the campfire is going to have a much higher kinetic energy than each particle in the glacier, right? Because it's moving fast, the particles in the campfire are moving very fast, whereas the particles in the glacier are going to be moving very slow. I mean, the thing is frozen, right? Now here's the thing. The glacier is absolutely massive compared to the campfire. And by massive, I really do mean that it has far more mass, meaning more particles, more atoms, more molecules. And so even though its particles are moving much slower than the particles in the campfire, it has so much more mass, so many more particles, that if you added up the kinetic energy of all the particles in that glacier, it would have significantly more thermal energy than if you added up the kinetic energy of all the particles in the campfire. So even though the campfire is much, much, much hotter, it has significantly less thermal energy than the glacier. Here's another way that you can think about it, actually. Let's say you have this glacier that's as big as your school building. Now, glaciers are often significantly bigger than that, even bigger than your school. But let's just say that it's the size of your school, okay, this big block of ice. If you took a normal campfire, all right, or just even a normal bonfire, maybe a little bit larger than a campfire, and you put it somehow underneath the glacier, right? You could never melt that entire glacier with that one fire, right? That's simply because there is less thermal energy in the campfire than there is in the glacier. And that's despite the fact that, again, the campfire has a much, much higher temperature. The fact that cold things can have lots of thermal energy is actually what makes heat pumps work. So if your house has central air conditioning and heating, you know, with that thing outside that has a fan inside it and it spins around and makes all these noises, okay, that is taking advantage of the fact that there is thermal energy everywhere in everything, including really cold things. So in the winter, for example, if you've got your heat on and those fans out there are spinning in that heat pump, they are actually taking the thermal energy from the cold air outside and they are moving it into your home to keep you warm. Essentially, they're actually taking kinetic energy from the air outside and they're transferring that kinetic energy to the particles inside your home which then increases the average kinetic energy of all the particles in the air inside your home, which of course increases the temperature. And so you get a little bit warmer, hopefully. Well, so I hope this video cleared some things up for you in terms of thermal energy and temperature. If you liked the video, please go ahead and subscribe below. Click on that fancy little bell icon so that you get notifications when I come out with new videos. Thank you so much, give me a thumbs up. 
and I hope to see you again soon.